recording number four. Again, focusing in on the increase in VO2 max that occurs with cardiorespiratory endurance training. Increases in VO2 max are due to increases in cardiac output max and AVO2 difference max. Uh, we're still going to be focusing on cardiac output right now. Heart rate max does not change with training, but stroke volume max does. Okay, and that's what we've been focusing on so far. And remember again that stroke volume is determined by three factors, preload EDV, left ventricular contractility, and afterload aortic pressure. We've all already established that LVH with training affects left ventricular contractility, LVID, affects end diastolic volume, pulmonary ventilation affects end diastolic volume, and now we're going to talk about some blood changes with training. Okay, so we've talked about these, and now we're going to talk about blood changes with training. Okay, so what we see after aerobic training is that plasma volume goes up and red blood cell volume goes up. And those two make up total blood volume. Okay, so total blood volume goes up with resistance training. So if we get an increase in total blood volume, okay, increase in plasma volume, increase in RBC volume are both going to contribute to an increase in total blood volume. Okay, this is going to increase venous return. And remember that venous return increases, uh, an increase in venous return will increase EDV, which will increase preload, uh, which again will increase left ventricular contraction strength, left ventricular pressure, which is P1, the pressure gradient between left ventricle, left ventricle and aorta, and therefore increases stroke volume. Okay? The other thing that's happening is, although we are getting uh, an increase in plasma and an increase in red blood cell volume, the increase in plasma is greater than the increase in red blood cell volume. Okay? And remember that hematocrit <clears throat> is red blood cell volume. over total volume, okay? This is increasing more than this, okay? So hematocrit will be dropping, okay? With a decrease in hematocrit, we get a decrease in viscosity, okay? With a decrease in viscosity, we get a decrease in peripheral resistance. Okay. And with peripheral resistance, okay, go back to your stroke volume concept map. Okay, how does peripheral resistance affect stroke volume? Okay. The decrease in peripheral resistance, you're gonna get lower afterload aortic pressure, which is P2. Okay. So we have an increase in plasma, we have an increase in red blood cell volume. Together they are increasing total blood volume which is increasing venous return. Okay. Venous return increases EDV, okay, etc. Increases stroke volume. Okay. I'm not going to go through all these details because we've gone over it many, many times. Um, because the increase in plasma is greater than the increase in RBC volume, what we get is uh, a decrease in viscosity. 
and therefore decrease in peripheral resistance because peripheral resistance is length times viscosity over radius to the fourth. Okay? With the decrease in peripheral resistance, we get less afterload, less aortic pressure, which is P2, okay? which means it's going to help contribute to that greater blood pressure gradient between the left ventricle and the aorta, which is P1 minus P2. Okay? So if P2 is going down, then the gradient is going up, okay? and that is also going to help stroke volume to increase. So two more of your 11 factors coming off the top will be plasma volume and red blood cell volume. Together, they increase total blood volume, which affects stroke volume. And the increase in plasma volume is also going to affect viscosity, which also affects stroke volume through a second mechanism.